There are lots of people in the world, and the number of people keeps growing. People need the environment to live, but the more people there are, the more of the environment they use. People change the environment in towns by putting up houses and roads and other buildings. Elsewhere, we change it to grow the food that we eat. This is a problem because people also need lots of environment like forests and oceans so that we can live. You might live near a bush or park area that is a nice environment with lots of plants and animals, and this is good, we need this environment to live and this environment needs us to look after it, so it can survive. Here, I'll show you a few ways you can help look after the environment. An environment has what we call a carrying capacity, that is, there is a limit to how many of each type of animal, including people, can survive in one area at a time. Think about your house. Maybe it has three bedrooms, and you, your parents, and your brother or sister live there. Perhaps you've got a couple of dogs, or a cat, three chickens, four goldfish, and two guinea pigs. Now imagine if you had four other people come to live with you over the holidays, and no extra food or beds. Where would the extra people sleep? Would you share your food with them? Would you have a quick shower so they could have one too? Now imagine another four people stayed with you too. That is 12 people, two dogs, a cat, three chickens, four goldfish, and two guinea pigs, in your three-bedroom house. Will you share everything with them? Could you eat only one meal a day instead of three, and no snacks? Could you miss out on a hot shower some days? Could you fit four people in each bed comfortably? Would you have enough space that you could all play? And what if four more people stayed with you? How many would it take till you had not enough food for even one single snack every second day? Do you think this would make you a bit cranky, or tired, or unwell, and maybe everyone would not get along and share? Well, this is what happens in the environment too. There is only so much food, water, and homes in the environment for each animal, including us. A healthy environment has what we call a rich biodiversity. That is, it has lots of living things. Rich means a lot. But what is biodiversity? Bio is short for biology, the study of life and living things like us or animals or plants or fungi, they are mushrooms or bacteria that can make you healthy or sick. And diversity. This means a group of many different things together. So when I say rich biodiversity I mean a lot of different types of animals that can all exist happily and healthily together in an environment because the carrying capacity can support them, like a big hotel. Now in urban areas, urban means a large area with lots of buildings and houses, we need to think about the carrying capacity because people and their activities can change it a lot. Sometimes we might accidentally cause changes to our environmental hotel, and we might not even know they are happening. Some of the changes might be bad like using poisons to scare the bugs away from our gardens, but some of them might be helpful like having shade and water in our backyards that animals can use. It is important that we understand that through the things we do, even in our homes, we can change the environment around us too, and because of this we are a part of the system, part of the environmental hotel with the animals and the plants, part of the biodiversity, and part of the carrying capacity. And so, we need to think about what we do and how we can be nice neighbors and help the animals and plants to stay healthy. To keep the animals healthy, we also need to think about what we can do if they are feeling stressed, or bullied. Remember how we talked about having everyone come to stay at your house? When you imagined that, did you feel just a bit cranky, just a bit annoyed, a bit like you wanted some time and space just for you, like it used to be with just your parents and your brother or sister and pets? Well, that is how the animals around us can feel because of us. And this stress can mean that animals have less energy that they need to get food or hang out with their friends, and this can make them sick. So, it is important that we take care and share our environment with them because we are all in the same big environment hotel and need to get along so we can keep our rich biodiversity and not just have one bossy type of animal but have lots of different ones that can live in the same area. No matter how small the animal, they all do a job and work for the environment. If there is only one or a few types of animals doing their jobs, then that environment will change and can become unhealthy and weak. More animals, that is our rich biodiversity, means lots of animals doing lots of different jobs and helping the environment to stay strong and healthy. Did you know that around your house, in your backyard, in the grass and trees behind your house, and the park down the street, and the bush that you might walk or ride your bike through, there are lots of different animals that live together happily? You see, Australia is lucky because we have a very rich biodiversity, 
remember that means lots of different plants and animals in one place. We have all different types of animals that live in the same area together, more than most other countries. And some of our types of animals are like nothing else in the world, like the platypus or kangaroo. So we need to be careful to share our environment with them, and make sure Australia stays rich in biodiversity and has a healthy environment because we might not be able to fix it, if it gets sick and has a low biodiversity. There are lots of special animals around us that we need to look after. There is the antichinus, a tiny marsupial carnivore, it eats other smaller animals like crickets and spiders. These mouse-sized animals are mostly active at night, but if it is safe and quiet then they can sometimes come out in the daytime too. They live in hollows inside trees or logs. A hollow is an empty hole that an animal can hide in. They like big old trees with bark that they can hide in and hunt under, and lots of dry leaves on the ground, and small vines, and bushes that they can run between, and hide in when they look for food. Because they are so small they have a few predators, that is, other animals that are bigger than them that eat them. To stay safe, they are very clever about how they move to hide from predators. They are even good at climbing trees in a spiral motion to trick them. There are bush rats, a native Australian rat that is omnivorous, that means it is not too picky about what it eats. It is carnivorous and eats other animals like insects, but it is also herbivorous and eats plants. It is bigger than an antichinus but it is similar because it is nocturnal too, that means they are both active and awake at night. They also like hollows, lots of dry leaves, and low plants they can hide between, but they are not as good at climbing up trees as antichinuses are. There are bandicoots. They are bigger than a rat, and look kind of like a rabbit and a rat had a baby that has a long nose. They are also omnivorous and nocturnal. They dig ice cream cone-shaped holes in the ground with their front feet so they can stick their long noses in and look for food. You might even see these holes in your backyard if you look carefully. During the day they sleep in a nest that is in a shallow hole in the ground with lots of low plants and tall native grass around. They even cover their nests over with leaves to hide them. They are very good for the environment because they turn over the soil, which helps the soil to stay healthy, and helps plant seeds to grow. There are possums, brushtail, ringtail, and pygmy, that means a very small possum about 10 centimeters long. Possums are common close to houses and in backyards but pygmy possums are less common. They are a vulnerable animal because there are not as many as there used to be. Possums are mostly herbivorous and eat plants. The leaves, flowers, and fruits are their favorites. Because they can move pollen from one part of the flower to another part of the plant, they are important pollinators that allow plants to grow fruits and seeds. They can also eat insects, but close to our houses they will eat almost anything and have a very sweet tooth. They are also nocturnal and usually nest in tree hollows. Ringtail possums sometimes make their nests out of lots of twigs on tree branches, they are called drays. And pygmy possums sometimes make small round nests out of shredded bark that sit on tree branches. There are gliders, squirrel gliders, sugar gliders, the larger greater gliders and yellow-bellied gliders, and the very small feather-tail gliders that are about 8 centimeters long. In New South Wales, there aren't so many squirrel or yellow-bellied gliders, so they are vulnerable here too. Gliders look a lot like an extra cute mostly smaller possum with big eyes and ears and long fluffy tails. They have skin between their front and back legs that can be stretched out to allow them to glide, which is like a very short version of flying on the wind between tree tops without using wings. They are also nocturnal and sleep in tree hollows or nests during the day, like the possums. They are omnivorous, eating both plants and insects, and are also important pollinators. They spend most of their time up in trees, and can glide between them for 20 to 50 meters. The yellow-bellied glider can even glide for up to 140 meters in one leap. There are bats, there are microbats that are very small and eat insects, and there are bigger bats that eat bigger insects and small lizards and frogs and fruits, and there are flying foxes that eat fruits and flowers and pollen. Bats are mostly nocturnal and sleep upside down in trees, or in small hollows in trees. Bats use their eyes but also use echolocation to find their food at night by making a very high-pitched sound out of their nose or mouth, a sound that people cannot hear. The sound bounces off anything it passes and they listen for the echo that this bounce makes. This is good for hunting because it can tell them the size, texture, and direction the prey is moving. They can also use echolocation to talk to each other. The flying foxes cannot use echolocation, but they have eyes that are more like ours, only smaller. There are echidnas that have long mouth, nose, 
and sticky tongue to find insects to eat. Ants and termites are their favorite foods. They are very shy and are active during both day and night, whenever the temperature is best for them, because they like to walk around when it is not too hot. They sleep under rocks, in hollow logs, or in hollowed areas around tree roots. They can also burrow into the soil to rest or hide under low bushes and big bunches of grass. There are goannas, that we also call lace monitors, these are very big lizards of up to 2 meters. They are ectotherms, this means that they cannot control their body temperature like we do, and it changes with the temperature of the environment. They like to look for food during the heat of the day, and some bake up in trees or on rocks on the ground, they can also sleep under big rocks or logs at night. They are carnivores and like to eat insects, possums, bandicoots, rats, mice, and echinus, birds, lizards, snakes, frogs, eggs, and animals that are already dead. They have a forked tongue, like snakes do, which helps them sense food, because it can tell them how far and what direction food is in. It can also tell them if another goanna is around, and if it is a male or female. There are other lizards. From very small skinks like you find in your garden, to bigger skinks like blue tongue lizards. They are also most active in the day due to the warmth, but some lizards, like geckos, prefer the night time. They like to eat insects and invertebrates, which means an animal that does not have a backbone, like worms and snails and beetles. They also eat some plants. They like to hide and sleep under lots of dry leaves on the ground, or under rocks, or logs, or behind bark on a tree. You need to be careful not to scare lizards, especially the small ones, because some of them can make part of their tail drop off to trick predators so that they can escape, and they think people are like predators. Most lizards can grow this tail back, but some cannot, and it takes a lot of energy to do it. There are snakes. They can be hard to find, but like the lizards they are ectotherms, but they can be active across both day and night. They like to eat smaller reptiles and frogs, mice, rats, antichinus, and bats. Bigger snakes can also eat possums or bandicoots. Because they swallow their prey whole, snakes will eat almost any animal they can catch and fit in their mouth. When they are resting they mostly take shelter under rocks and logs, or anywhere they can fit and hide. But in the day, they also like to rest in the sun on a warm path or road. There are frogs. Frogs are ectothermic like reptiles, but belong to another group called amphibians. This means they live on both land and water, but the amount of time on each really depends on the species. They like to get heat in the day but they are also active at night when they like to look for insects to eat, or call out to their friends to play. Only the male frogs can make the calling sounds. There are both tree frogs and ground frogs close to urban areas, so frogs can be found sleeping around rocks, or in trees, or low plants, or water. There are owls, powerful owls, barn owls, masked owls, sooty owls, barking owls, grass owls, and the southern boobook. The powerful owl is the largest owl in Australia and is a top predator, which means they keep the populations of smaller animals under control so that we can keep our rich biodiversity. Powerful owls mostly like to eat possums, gliders and flying foxes, but can also eat antichinus, rats, lizards, frogs and other birds. Owls are active at night and sleep in large high up tree hollows during the day, except for the grass owl that nests on the ground in clumps of thick tall grass. There are tawny frogmouths too. They look a bit like owls, but are not owls. They are active at night and hunt smaller animals but they have smaller weaker legs than owls, so they catch their prey with their beaks, and not their feet like owls do. They also mostly sleep out in the open on branches, where they make nests for their eggs. Tawny frogmouths are very good at hiding because their feathers look a lot like the bark on trees. There are lots of different kinds of other birds. Even bush turkeys, who can fly and run along the ground and dig, and might even dig in your yard for food or to make a big pile of leaves for a nest. Birds eat lots of different things, they can eat insects and other invertebrates, lizards, snakes, frogs, rats, mice, antichinus, or parts of plants, or seeds. There are lots of different insects and other invertebrates too, that work hard to turn the soil, and this lets the plants dig their roots in deeper and grow bigger. Lots of them also pollinate the plants, which means it is an animal that helps plants to make fruits or seeds so that they can make more plants and food. Some invertebrates like spiders eat small insects, and help control the numbers of them, which, remember, helps the biodiversity. 
because a lot of the animals I have listed here too eat insects and other invertebrates. It is very important that there are a lot of them in the environment, so that there is lots to eat, and all the animals can stay healthy. In the area where you live, in Australia, there are two more animals but they can cause a problem for the carrying capacity and the health of our environment hotel, because they are not native Australian animals. They are animals that people decided about 200 or more years ago to bring to Australia. And they are a problem because they are bigger predators, and the Australian animals are not as used to them, so they don't know how to share the environment hotel with them. Sometimes this means that these predators can eat too many of the smaller animals, like feather tail gliders and pygmy possums, and remember, this changes the balance of our environment hotel, and can make the environment get sick and change. Do you know which animals I am talking about? It is the red fox and the pet cat. But it is not all bad. Scientists are finding that a lot of our Australian animals are still living in urban areas, close to our houses, or even in our backyards. Even when red foxes and cats are around, our urban areas can still have a healthy, rich biodiversity. So, we are trying to understand why. Maybe people help the environmental hotel to stay healthy? Maybe the environment is changing too fast further away in the bush, because of climate change, so the environment closer to houses, where we use more water and reduce climate impacts is better for them. Maybe animals are close to urban areas because that is where they used to live before the buildings were there? No matter the reason, one thing is clear. We need the environment, and it needs us too. Remember, in our urban environment we are part of the environment hotel, and because what we do disturbs the environment around us, we need to be caring. So, how do we do this? With all of these animals around us, it means we need to do our job to look after the environment. Especially because the environment around us helps us live. It provides us with clean air to breathe, and water to drink and bathe in, and soil to grow our food in, and shade to make our homes cooler on hot days and protect us from the wind and rain on cold days. It also makes us happy and healthy when we walk through it, or watch a butterfly, or a bird, or a lizard, or possum, or any animal going about its daily life. And especially because we are part of the environment hotel too. Because what we do can cause changes in the environment around us, we are like a super predator. We don't eat the animals around us, but we can make big changes in the environment just by being around it. And we make even bigger changes than the biggest predator can. So, it is only fair that we do our job too. But what is our job? Well, we can help biodiversity by thinking about what plants are in our backyard. It is important to make sure they are native, that is they come from Australia and are able to grow healthy here because they understand and like our weather and environment. This can also mean that they need less watering, which is also good for the environment. When we have plants in our yards that are not from Australia they can spread to the environment around you, and can cause problems because they might take up more room, or they might be harmful to our animals. They change the environment hotel, and that changes the carrying capacity, and that changes how many animals can live there. So, it is best if we use plants in our yard that used to grow there before we built houses there. It is also important not to use poisons like herbicides and pesticides in your yard, that may scare away insects and bugs, because they have an important job to. Remember, they can be food for other animals, or they can move the soil so plants can grow, or they can pollinate. It is important that we remember that our houses are in the middle of the environment around us, and so animals may visit or live in our backyards and they need insects to be there so that they can eat them. It is best if we let the animals feed themselves, but sometimes people like to feed them too. This can upset their tummies so it is best not to do it, but if you do, you should try to feed them what they feed themselves because some of our foods like bread, mince, and sausages can make animals very sick. You can always feed them some dried worms, or seeds, from the pet store, but it really is better for them if you let them find their own food in the environment. Otherwise, you are interfering with the carrying capacity and it can make food for more animals than there is room for, and it can also spread diseases between the animals and make them sick, which can cause bigger problems for everyone else in the environment hotel. We can also help by trying to be nice to the animals, and not be scared of them sharing our yards and the bush around us. They might build a nest, or they might just eat some of your plants, and then go home to the bush. But they are being nice neighbors, they like us, and do not want to hurt us. There is no harm in sharing a little with them, because we benefit from them too. Some of the other things you can do to help your neighbors in the environment hotel are 
One, because a lot of animals need to dig and burrow in the soil, we can help by keeping the soil loose. If we drive, walk, or ride over the same area too much it can make the soil very hard to dig in. So it is good to make sure there is some healthy loose soil about. Two, so that all types of animals feel safe in our yards it is nice to have big rocks, logs and lots of leaves on the ground. As well as, big old trees, and bunches of grass, vines, or shrubs, so that they can move between all of these, and use them to hide, and sleep in. 3. Share the shade in your yard with them, and leave out a bowl of water, especially on hot days. 4. Leave your outside lights off at night as much as possible. Remember some animals work at night and they are used to seeing in the dark. Bright lights can hurt their eyes, like when someone shines a torch in yours. Light can also help the predators find smaller prey more easily, and they might eat too many in one area, which changes the biodiversity too. This is the same for when using your torch outside, even when looking for animals. Don't shine a torch for too long in one spot outside, we don't want to hurt any animal's eyes, or stress any animals out. 5. Keep loud noises to a minimum both day and night, it would make you stressed if your brother or sister sung badly all day and you could not get away. So, when we make loud noises, like at a football game or playing music at a party, we need to give the animals a break too, and maybe only do it for a few hours and then stop. That way, they don't get too stressed out, and they still have some time left in their night or day to go and look for food, so they can stay healthy. 6. Watch animals from a distance when you walk, or run, or ride your bike through the bush, and don't try to touch the animals. To animals, even snakes and goannas, we are really scary because we are big and we are loud and sometimes, sadly, we do hurt animals, even if we don't mean to. So, when an animal sees us they can get scared if we are around for too long. 7. Stick to the paths when you are in the bush. We don't want to create too many paths and tracks in the bush. It is fun to play and ride and walk and run in the bush because we can see the animals doing their jobs and we can see how special it all is, and that can make us happy, but if we make more new paths then we might be making them in the middle of some animals' houses, and they would have less space to live. Also, the red fox and cat use the paths to hunt, so it can make it harder for our native animals to go out and eat safely away from these introduced predators if there are lots of paths. So, it is important that we share the bush space in the environment hotel, and we stick to the tracks and paths that are already there, and don't damage anything. 8. If your dog is with you too, then you need to keep them on their lead and pick up any of their poos. Animals use poos like telephones, and they leave all sorts of messages in them about their health, what they eat, if they are a parent, if they are stressed. Other different animals can understand what they say in their poos, and another animal might use the poo message to keep safe, because it might tell them a predator is near them, and hungry. Because dogs are omnivores that eat other animals, their poos can smell very scary to smaller animals and can stress them out and make them move away. And remember, this could change the biodiversity and make the environment sick and the environment hotel smaller. 9. If you own a cat, you could try to keep it inside or in your own yard, it is easy to entertain them with tunnels and high up places for them to sit, and moving their toys around or creating space for them to look out the window. Don't forget that cats love boxes too and it can be fun to create them new and different box houses to play in. 10. When you are in the car, help the driver look out for animals on the road, especially in areas where there are plants and not too many street lights at night. Driving slowly can give animals a chance to escape and get out of the way safely. I hope I have helped you to learn more about your wild neighbors and how you can be a good neighbor and help the urban biodiversity around you to stay rich and healthy.